welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. When shopping for your family's meals, do you know where you can find Alaska-grown products? Everywhere. They're available at your local grocery stores and farmer's markets across the state. Alaska-grown products are fresher and more nutritious, and buying local helps grow our economy. So just look for the Alaska-grown label when you shop, or ask your grocer where the Alaska-grown products are. Remember, Alaska-grown. It's closer, fresher, better. And it's all Alaska-grown. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for tonight's show. Up uh, first here, yesterday's satellite imagery showing uh, quite a cloud or cloud area here from the southwest all the way up across into uh, west or up into Canada, with the uh, main rain-producing area here from the southwest coast exiting Norton Sound, sliding right on across the central interior. And then back to the north, clearing out a little bit up there around Noatak Valley area. Another weaker band coming down onto the Arctic coast. And uh, not too bad here south of the Alaska Range. Uh, partly sunny skies or mostly cloudy all along the North Gulf Coast, South Central Alaska, the Copper River Basin. And down across uh, the Panhandle, uh, kind of a mostly cloudy day there with uh, some areas picking up some sunshine. Otherwise, out to the west, clouds in the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And then today we showed, uh, or actually this shows, low pressure uh, winding up here uh, right along the southwest coast there. That brought some uh, fair amounts of rain and pretty good northerly winds on the back side of that system. Rain pushing into Bristol Bay and the southwest interior with uh, possibly reaching Kodiak Island there. Nothing showing up at the airport though in the way of any rainfall and also nothing over south central Alaska and the main rain up here north of the mountains are from actually the northern Sitna Valley right up across the central interior there kind of pushing southeastward but keeping it wet although the uh, rain beginning to lighten up and uh, become a little more intermittent as that frontal boundary weakens some clearing back behind through this area just areas of clouds up over the northwest valleys uh, back to the Arctic coast and then uh, some more moisture uh, bringing some light rain, fog, drizzle, very light amounts there to Barrow with the main system still back to the northwest. Uh, sun breaking out here over the eastern Copper River Basin. Some areas rising into the 70s this afternoon, right up in uh, toward uh, Toke, also rose into the 70s. Had some breaks here off the coast, clearing over Canada back to the north, but a lot of clouds just socked in most of the day across all of the panhandle. After some morning showers, uh, picked up a few hundredths of an inch, nearly a tenth of an inch today, earlier today at Sitka, a few hundredths of an inch up to the north, so really light amounts. Uh, thinning of the clouds down toward Dixon entrance. That resulted in a little warmer conditions uh, down south. And on the chart today, there's that low center, kind of uh, over western Cusquam Bay. Pretty good northerly winds. Uh, anywhere from 35 to 45 miles per hour from the Yukon Delta coast right down across Nunavak Island there. Macquarie seeing gusts uh, to oh, roughly 40 miles an hour at times earlier today. And Cape Ramonzoff uh, late last night, early this morning, had a gust close to 50 miles per hour. Lighter west-southwesterly winds here south of the low center and then back farther to the north, high pressure ridging in across St. Lawrence Island, uh, lightening those winds up pretty good across the Seward Peninsula. Look like a little bit of clearing out in that area. And again, more clouds up here to the north, but uh, really the only rain producing clouds is grazing the Arctic coast there uh, with that weak warm front, the main system back to the northwest. This front uh, beginning to weaken now, especially right through this area here. Still some uh, showers and areas of rain here through this zone. Flood advisories out for the central interior rivers here for the next couple of days due to all the rain. The one to two inches have, have fallen there. And actually uh, during the day today, Fairbanks picked up about two thirds of an inch of rain. Again, the heaviest amounts following earlier in the day today. And at a place called uh, Chattanooga, they picked up about three quarters of an inch in the same time period. 
Otherwise, the Alaska Peninsula along the main front down in this area they had roughly a quarter to a half inch of rain or so from actually Bristol Bay all the way down across the peninsula and then all the clouds here across the southeast coast. But dry conditions, very weak system out to the west, uh, getting another day of IFR out over the western Aleutians with uh, a little bit of moisture along with the fog. Otherwise, high pressure sitting tonight out in the central Bering Sea. A couple of troughs out here continue to uh, keep the ceilings visibilities low and conditions a little damp. Winds lighten up now along the southwest coast here as the system gradually weakens. Frontal boundary right through here across Bristol Bay from uh, southern Cusquam Valley areas. So look for the chances of rain to increase there a little bit with that uh, kind of a southwest flow there coming into Kodiak Island. So uh, any rainfall that occurs will probably be on the southern and western side of the island there, Shelikoff Strait, and then the upslope areas there of the uh, Lucian Range on up into uh, the Kamishak Bay area. And then this front really weakening by uh, 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. All will be left are a few scattered showers here over the eastern interior, a little more widespread over the western Alaska Range, dry over the Copper River Basin, dry back over the uh, Yukon Flats, all the way out to the Seward Peninsula with variable clouds, maybe some clearing, and another front uh, drops on down, kind of a weak front, or it is a weak front there with a little bit of light rain, fog, and drizzle at times, and of course keeping the visibilities down in that area. The flying conditions uh, better on the eastern Arctic coast, way over to the east there, but uh, a lot of moisture streaming eastward with that feature. Otherwise, uh, light winds, but mostly cloudy to cloudy skies here across the pan, and I'll still uh, risk of some very light precipitation over areas of the north, but again, amounts not or amounts will be quite light. And then for tomorrow, the system edges its way eastward. Moisture will slide up Cook Inlet across south central Alaska, so chances of rain increase, especially afternoon here for northern Cook Inlet with uh, some showers on up toward the valleys there. Mostly sunny day here over the interior, more of a uh, cross mountain wind flow from south to north there, so it should dry out uh, hopefully. Pretty good tomorrow, a few scattered showers, sunshine, temperatures uh, 60s and 70s up there through the interior, and some of the taller clouds could develop into a thunderstorm or two. Otherwise, chance of rain, Prince William Sound, cloudy for the eastern Gulf Coast, and uh, maybe a little more sunshine here across the panhandle uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, hopefully, more sun up over the Yukon there, and of course, Copper River Basin, eastern interior looking pretty good, and this front, uh, kind of stalled out there along the Arctic coast, westerly flow, west-southwesterly flow there, so that uh, very weak front, narrow band of uh, light precipitation uh, persisting in that area, and looks uh, pretty good there for the Seward Peninsula. A lot of IFR, or a lot of VFR actually today over the northern Bering Sea, back up towards St. Lawrence Island and in toward the Bering Strait. Some of that sliding down, uh, almost making it to the Pribilof as far as the clear skies go. Maybe some will make it in there tonight, maybe not. Lasting through tomorrow, high pressure just south of uh, St. George. And northwest winds, light, uh, looks pretty good for the eastern Aleutians. Showers along the Alaska Peninsula and then more moisture with those weak troughs persisting out over the western Aleutians and the southwest Bering Sea. And uh, going ahead to Tuesday, we'll see this whole system weakens, pushes eastward. Uh, weak high pressure could result in some pretty good clearing here out across the uh, southwest area here, Cuscombe Bay, right up into maybe the Cuscombe Valley areas. Uh, lingering showers in the afternoon, pretty scattered and light along the western Alaska range. And uh, weak front, that'll keep occasional light rain at times going, cloudy skies from the North Gulf Coast, uh, Cordova, maybe up into Valdez, of course Prince William Sound, and possibly uh, northern Cook Inlet there, maybe cutting off at the Chugach, but uh, more showers of the moisture shifting northward here, upper level trough coming across, and now push moisture across the Copper River Basin, so look for mostly cloudy skies, and more in the way of some shower activity there, maybe isolated thunderstorms as well as the interior areas with uh, clouds shifting southeastward. So uh, not quite as sunny or warm on Tuesday here over the eastern central interiors. It will be tomorrow. This front drops southward again with a band of light rain associated with it. Not much in the wind department with this thing at all. And then uh, areas of uh, IFR, fog and drizzle slide southeastward right onto the central Arctic coast, possibly into the western north slope as well. So not much improvement behind this except out to the west, a little more offshore flow. Kivalina, Point Hope, 
looking pretty good. Could see some sunshine there. And uh, of course here over the southwest interior and then back into the uh, possible shower activity again, Port Alexander, Sitka, on up uh, Elfin Cove in those areas. Otherwise, uh, a little bit better chance of maybe some sunshine now, upper level ridge, what there was of it, shifting into Western Canada, but still have a surface ridge here, Northwest flow. So maybe you'll see a little sunshine again from uh, say Hyder, Annette, back up toward Petersburg and Wrangell. Then you run into the clouds up towards Juneau. Pretty good day, dry here, Kodiak Island showers off the coast now, what there uh, will, will be maybe tomorrow night. Northwest winds kicking in, so look for partly sunny skies there. Also for the Alaska Peninsula, dry conditions. And it looks kind of damp and wet, but not much wind at all out over the Aleutians there. Expect the areas of IFR and maybe some clearing over the uh, southeast Bering Sea, but a lot of moisture back to the west. And then with this front as it comes down across St. Lawrence Island. Temperatures this afternoon across the southeast coast uh, had a 72 down at Metlakatla. Otherwise, in the 50s and 60s, uh, 66 at Craig, 59 at Juneau, 60 over at Yakutat, and upper 50s to mid 60s here, Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast, South Central Alaska. Willow pushed up to 66 degrees, and with some sunshine, Mac or, uh, McCarthy pushed up to 73, while uh, Tokad 70, but much cooler, upper 50s here back in toward the Tanana Valley with the clouds and rain, but Tanana did push up to 70. Fort Yukon reached 63, mid 50s through the Berks Range, 40s along the Arctic coast, lower to mid 50s here over the Northwest uh, interior, Seward Peninsula, 50s upper to lower 60s there for the uh, Southwest with uh, McGrath at 60, Kipnook at 61, 53 at St. Michael and Unalakleet had 55, Nome 51 degrees, 52 at Savunga. And the Fribilofs, uh, lower to mid 50s there, maybe a little bit of sun broke out this afternoon in St. Paul, mid 50s central Aleutians out to Shimia, and uh, mid to upper 50s for the Alaska Peninsula. Lows for tonight, pretty mild out there, mid 50s here. Uh, northeast Bristol Bay, maybe the Susitna Valley, otherwise 40s to the north, mid 30s central eastern Arctic coast, and lower to mid 50s for the Panhandle. Highs for tomorrow warming up uh, at least into the lower, maybe mid 70s here over the eastern Tanana Valley area, 60s all the way back to the southwest coast, lower 60s Bristol Bay, 40s and 50s north of the Brooks Range, and uh, maybe some mid to upper 60s, possibly lower 70s in areas of the Panhandle. Once again, no change with the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. Flying weather uh, for tomorrow, uh, well, areas of marginal VFR along with some IFR here over the southwest coast, up the western Alaska range over to, uh, say, uh, Denali, maybe as far north as Healy. Over the White Mountains could be a little marginal and marginal VFR here across the southeast coast with the IFR kind of grazing the coastline there. And then with that front, more IFR, central western Arctic coast, better in the east, a lot of IFR out over the Bering Sea, but uh, you can see VFR in the forecast here, right down across the Perviloff Islands, but some IFR slides into St. Lawrence Island. And for tomorrow afternoon, VFR here, eastern Arctic coast, right down to the Copper River Basin. Could be some lingering IFR here, Prince William Sound, southern Kenai Peninsula areas. And again, with that moisture coming northward, areas of IFR in the western Alaska range. But uh, VFR here, eastern Bering Sea, IFR widespread out to the west, v, uh, becoming VFR across all of the southeast coast. Passes Anatovic and Adigan, both VFR for another day. And Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, rainy, uh, also looking marginal. And windy, marginal VFR becoming VFR into the afternoon. Isabel, uh, or VFR, same forecast from Intasta, Tanita, VFR, and Portage, uh, IFR. For Chilkoot and White, uh, things looking, uh, becoming VFR. For the freezing levels, uh, 8,000 feet, that upper low late tonight, actually, early tomorrow morning, 4 a.m. is what this map's drawn for and 8,000 feet with the upper low there right over Bristol Bay. Warmer to the north, but again, not much gradient, generally 10,000 feet through the interior down across the southeast coast, and uh, a little bit milder there. Freezing level is about uh, 12,000 feet out over the western Bering Sea. And for icing, uh, areas of above 8,000 feet of the Rhyme, maybe mixed varieties here, southwest coast into the Alaska Range. Kenai Peninsula, possibly South Central Alaska, maybe Kodiak Island, and then another narrow swath up there to the Northwest. 
and for the winds aloft, uh, higher pressure, uh, weak high pressure here over the eastern Gulf of Alaska into the eastern interior. But that'll make for a pretty good day. Copper River Basin down across the Panhandle tomorrow. Upper level low back to the northwest. Uh, not too strong of a flow, maybe up to 70 knots there coming around that low center. Westerlies the strongest jet off the Arctic coast now. And then taking a look at 9,000 feet, higher pressure holding there over the western Aleutians with a trough right through this area down along the southwest coast from St. Lawrence Island. And south to southwest, again, south coming into the central interior, just 10 to 15 knots, pretty light winds for the panhandle, really light out here over the Aleutians and the Bering Sea, 25 to 40 out of the southwest uh, from the Bering Strait right across the Brooks Range there, North Slope and the Arctic Coast. Same pattern at 3,000 feet, uh, 20 to 35 knots up through that area, lighter in the interior. And pretty light here, maybe 20 knots still wrapping around that low center there, just uh, right near Dillingham, 25 knots east of Kodiak Island, lighter up over South Central Alaska, a big high out over the Bering Sea. And for the turbulence chart, uh, could be a little bit of a, uh, Light to isolated moderate chop here, western Prince William Sound, uh, across the Chugach Mountains, maybe up in the Manuska Valley with some uh, gusty east-southeast winds that could possibly develop. Otherwise, the bumpiest rides will be found from the central Arctic coast back down toward Point Lay. Light to isolated chop southwest of there, right through the strait to St. Lawrence Island. Pretty smooth everywhere else. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining me once again is Cindy Preller. She is the Tsunami Program Manager for the National Weather Service in Alaska region. Thanks for joining us again, Cindy. Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. We're talking about tsunami awareness and safety here in Alaska especially, and one of the things that has been uh, your, one of your main focuses is uh, the Tsunami Ready Program. What is that, and uh, how do Alaskans find out more? Awesome. Yes, yeah, Tsunami Ready is a National Weather Service hosted program mm -hmm. in uh, partnership with Storm Ready. Okay. And it is a program that we uh, conduct with our partners in the state, mm -hmm. but it's mostly community driven. So if okay. a community wants to become Tsunami Ready, well, the first thing they need to do is get a hold of me or, or their local WCM at a weather mm -hmm. forecast office okay. or their Tsunami uh, team at the state level. So, and this is something that's a NOAA grant, so there's money available to help encourage the preparedness at, at the local level there in the city or the, uh, the village. Yeah. What are some of the places that have done this already? Oh, our oldest tsunami ready city is Seward, Good. you know, but also Sitka, Homer, Valdez are the, you know, the main players, but we've got, mm -hmm. we've got several tsunami ready communities that I'm very proud of. It takes several years to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. And so a few of the things that they do is um, the tsunami risk will be assessed by okay. someone like me or another scientist will help find out, you know, really what their probability is. Mm -hmm. We'll create an inundation map, an evacuation map. Okay. They'll have a mitigation plan. Um, we will set up uh, some partnerships with the schools, yeah. uh, make an evacuation shelter, and then they need to practice. But it is the city that owns the program, really. Mm -hmm. it, it's up to them. And many cities would like to have sirens, and so we help them get those. And you know, and they practice. They have to practice. Sure. So let's say I'm driving into a place like Seward that's tsunami ready. What are some of the things I should look for as maybe a visitor, that no, so I know maybe where I need to go or can be more aware of my tsunami risk? Absolutely. The tsunami ready signage is, is really blatant. It's this, okay. you know, blue and white curling wave sign and, mm -hmm. and there's different shapes of signs that will show you if you are in the hazard zone or mm -hmm. where the evacuation routes are and when you're out of shelter. Okay. So this is a, a multi-step process that helps the uh, residents be more aware of their own risk but then also prepare for when that risk arrives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, many communities um, uh, sound their sirens daily, some sound, sound them weekly, you know, okay. to make sure everybody knows what they mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's often drills. We have an annual drill once a year. We have Tsunami Awareness Preparedness Week. Mm -hmm. And that's a good time for each community to, to do some exercising. Okay. And is this a program that is unique to Alaska? Absolutely not. It's national. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, 
all over the country, you'll have the same signage, so it's, it's consistent. Good, so if I'm taking the kids to California, I should be able to see something familiar. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And you know, some communities hesitate because they think it'll discourage tourism. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to tell those communities that what they're actually doing is they're encouraging responsibility. Sure. The tsunami's going to happen. Right. And it's gonna hit every coastline. So, you know, it's it's not about when, it's mm -hmm. it'll be any time. So the fact that they're showing tourists that they are making steps to be prepared for this, I think, would encourage people to want to stay there. Right, and that would be no different than, say, you or I visiting the Midwest where we know there's going to be really bad thunderstorms and maybe there's a risk for tornadoes. We're, we're aware of that risk when we go there. Absolutely, if I see a yeah. sign for a tornado shelter, I'm gonna remember that. Right, mm -hmm. okay, all right. So we're just doing a better job of being more prepared with something that's bound to happen again. I hope so. Okay, <laughs> very good. Where can people uh, go again to learn more about the Tsunami Ready Program here in Alaska? Well, one, there's a Tsunami Ready website, mm -hmm. so, you know, just Tsunami Ready, Google and that'll tsunami get ready. you there. Mm -hmm. okay. And then probably the best person for people to contact is their warning coordination meteorologist okay. at their local weather forecast office, which is Anchorage or Juneau, most likely. Okay, all right, so most of the folks along the Bering Sea coast, again, are not at a huge risk for tsunamis. No, nope, they don't need to worry about it. Okay, Thank very you. good. But always learning to be uh, prepared no matter where you are in Alaska, uh, no matter what the risk, always a good step. And tsunami is a major player in that, as we well know from events like 1964. Mm -hmm. okay. Alaskans are resilient. I really believe in them. Very good, very good. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for joining us again. And uh, please make an effort to uh, learn more about the Tsunami Ready program in your village and uh, town if you haven't already. Uh, we'll be back with Cindy again uh, next time to talk more about the Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, Alaska. We actually have a group of geologists working for the National Weather Service. So scratch your head on that one and we'll join you next time. I'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Packs. <music>Northwest 20 here for the south coast. Westerlies 15 to 20 up to the north. These seas up here only 3 to 5 feet, 5 to 6 feet down south. Northwest 20 for Clarence Strait with 4 foot seas. A little lighter there for Stevens Passage. South Lynn Canal in the afternoon picking up to about 20. Then for uh, Tuesday, small craft advisories in the afternoon there for Northern Lynn Canal. South to west winds here on the north coast uh, right on down to just west of Port Alexander. Then you got Northwest 20 for the extreme south coast, also for Clarence Strait, Northwest 15 for Stevens Passage. Prince William Sound, variable to south or southeast, variable 10, seas two feet or less. Uh, Cook Inlet, same forecast, light southeasterly south of the Forelands. And Southerly's at about 15, Kamishak Bay on down Shelikoff Strait there. Seas pretty slight, three to four feet, six to seven feet here along eastern Kodiak Island into the Barrens, but the winds, small craft advisories there at 25 knots. South to south, west 15 for the North Gulf Coast with four foot seas. And those seas pick up a little bit here on Tuesday, six feet, but the winds even more. So small craft advisories there for the uh, eastern Gulf Coast, 25 knots, east 15, Prince William Sound. Southwest, uh, give or take there for Cook Inlet, northern Cook Inlet, west 10 to the south. Kamishak Bay, Northwest 15, West 15 for the uh, Barrens. Southwest 20, 22 knots for Shelikoff Strait on Tuesday, small craft advisories on the east side of Kodiak Island. For the uh, Bristol Bay forecast, light winds tomorrow, westerlies 15 for the peninsula, Southwest 20 knots, uh, Castle Cape on up to Sitkanak. And uh, for that same zone there, uh, 20 knots out of the west, Westerly is a 20 for Bristol Bay, otherwise the Alaska Peninsula, West 15 for Tuesday, sees just four to five feet. And for the Eastern Aleutians, well, across on Alaska Island, Northwest 10 to 15, otherwise a little more variable here toward Nikolsky. Then Southeasterly is 15 to 20 through the Central Aleutians and becoming quite light back out to the West. And uh, they'll stay light again here, south to Southeast, 10 to 15, West of Adak, 15 to 20 knots Southeasterly is there, for the central Aleutians and uh, mostly southeast winds, uh, 10 to 20 knots there for the eastern Aleutians with those seas still pretty low, three to maybe five feet. And for uh, the southwest coast, north, north of Nunavak Island, westerlies of 20 knots extend right out across uh, uh, the island here in the northern Bering Sea, northwest 15 for the Pribilof, southwest 25, small craft advisories for St. Lawrence Island. 
And then for Tuesday, Southwest 20 here for St. Matthew Island, still carrying small craft advisories there for the uh, St. Lawrence Island area. West 20 south of uh, Nunavak Island on into Kamishak Bay, light winds for the Pribilofs. And we've got uh, small craft advisories going on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast here all the way over to Demarcation Point, 25 knots out of the west, southwest 20 for the central coast, 15 to 20 knots on the west side, and then southwest 25. Uh, in that zone. For the uh, Tuesday outlook, uh, big directional change here. Northerlies, central coast, only 15 knots on down the coastline, picking up to about 20 from Cape Beaufort, all the way down to the Bering Strait. And then on uh, for tonight, uh, another front uh, brings some more moisture there with the IFR, central western Arctic coast. Pretty good here through the interior, drying out, especially over the uh, Tanana Valley, as far as rainfall diminishing, becoming showers, becoming scattered late tonight. Still wet here over the southwest with that front, uh, pushing more moisture in toward Kodiak Island there. Uh, may or may not reach the east side. A little bit of moisture here slipping on up maybe to the southern Kenai Peninsula. Nothing significant at all. Mostly cloudy, isolated showers, mostly over the northern Panhandle. Fair, partly mostly cloudy, Copper River Basin, high pressure out over the Bering Sea. These winds diminishing here, Nunavak Island, the southwest coast. And for tomorrow, that front kind of stalls out up in the north there. Pretty good day, mostly sunny, maybe a few isolated uh, convective showers there over the interior. Wet, south central Alaska, back to the Kuskokwim Bay area. Look for more sun for the Panhandle tomorrow, sunny and warm in the interior, Copper River Basin. And then for Tuesday, uh, still kind of wet here, north Gulf Coast areas, more clouds and showers over the eastern interior. Uh, weak front right through here with a little moisture, mostly sunny in the southwest, mostly cloudy for the southeast coast and cloudy out over the Aleutians. Have a great day. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.